And now it's time to go ahead and prepare your dishwasher for installation. In addition to the hardware that was included with your dishwasher, which included the brackets and the clamp, you also need a dishwasher kit. And my particular dishwasher kit includes the stainless steel braided line for the water supply, as well as a standard three-prong dishwasher power cord. Wire nuts to attach the power cord. And then most dishwasher kits will also include an elbow of some sort. Um, this is the standard elbow currently, the 90 degree elbow for the water supply. However, on LG dishwashers, you will actually not need this. LG has this end already pre-attached on the dishwasher. So you won't need this, but typically when you purchase a dishwasher kit, like a, a complete kit, it'll include it. You won't need it for, for this installation. And as far as tools, all you'll need in this step is simply a Phillips screwdriver, uh, just a Phillips bit screwdriver or drill, and then the 5 8 inch open wrench to attach the supply line, the dishwasher supply line, or you can use an open wrench um, to, to attach that as well. And then of course, as I mentioned previously, your drain hose is already attached and, and ready to go. First thing you want to do is go ahead and lay your dishwasher on its back so we can get it prepared. And go ahead and start off. You're going to find that the kick plate is already attached from the manufacturer, secured by two screws. So go ahead, this is where you'll need your Phillips screwdriver. Just pop off the two screws. And your kick plate now is removed and out of the way. Then I'm going to go ahead and show you, point out a few things. This is going to be the electrical box where the power cord is going to be secured and attached. And then this is going to be where the water supply line will be connected. As I said, it has the elbow pre-attached from the factory. Then um, you got the leveling legs. In the front, you're going to find two. And then on the back, there's just one in the center that's actually controlled by this screw here. So this is how we'll be able to make the adjustments there. Since we're talking about those, we'll go ahead and get that done now. What you want to do is go ahead and break loose these feet. Um, they're a lot easier to do when you don't have any pressure on them, so just break them loose. Do all of them. Break them loose here. And uh, do the same thing with the back. Make sure that the mechanism that controls that is functioning. It shows you which direction to turn so that um, you could uh, get it brought down. So we are going to go just like that. As you can see, so don't go too high up so it doesn't make it too hard for you to slide in. You just want to get them started. That's it. Just so that, so that's it. All right, let's get right to it. We'll go ahead and get started with. Gotta get the um, water supply attached first. So as I mentioned, the steel braided line that's included in your dishwasher kit um, is actually already has built-in seal. So you don't need anything in addition to that. This line, that seal makes the, the seal so that you don't have any, you know, it'll make it a tight seal so you don't have any leaks. But simply attach that to the elbow and I recommend you thread it by hand as far as it'll go. Because what's really important is that you don't over tighten them. That rubber, that seal that's in there is rubber. And over, over tightening it can create a leak. Um, so go as far as you can by hand and then all you need to do is simply give it Oh yeah, at most, you can feel for it. You just don't want to overdo it. So once you get to a point where you're getting some you know, resistance, you'll, that'll be your tight end. But don't worry, once we get this water line hooked up, we'll go ahead and test to make sure that we don't have any, any leaks. So as I said, don't over tighten it. And um, the way to tell is you should just make sure if you, try, once it's tightened enough, you shouldn't be able to grab it by hand and turn it. Like this part shouldn't be loose from that. Um, and then this is, you can't do it by hand. So that's, that's going to be your indicator that it's, it's, it's snug. Um, the next thing we'll go ahead and do is go ahead and attach our power cord. So remove this cover. Put that then removed. And something's stuff me. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay. So get that moved. And the power cord that I'm using already includes the stress relief clamp. So that's nice. If it if you have a power cord that doesn't include it, be sure to add it because you don't want the wires loose in there or don't have any kind of um, uh, they're not just uh, s secured into the box so you're gonna simply with this particular cord or the stress relief you're gonna push slide that through this back hole and then it'll clip into place if you have a metal stress relief clamp um, you slide it through and then thread that on um, and then at this point all we're gonna need is our three wire nuts and we're gonna go ahead and collect connect the electric here for the power cord the nice thing in this part is that it is color coded so all you'll need to do is match the colors. You're going to have your ground wire, so the green with the green, and then there's the black wire for your hot, so black with black, and then your neutral wire, white with white. Um, what's important here is just, as you saw, you're going to go ahead and get the, the, the ends here lined up as close as possible without um, twisting them in any way and use the actual wire nut to do the twisting for you and just make sure you're holding the wires down here where my see my thumb holding them tight so that they don't actually start twisting so hold them straight and just use the wire nut to twist the wire tips and go as much as it'll go and uh, just double check that nothing's loose give each each wire separately a tug and make sure it doesn't break loose and you're gonna repeat that for all three the hot and the neutral All right, once you've verified that all, all those are nice and tight, you can go ahead and clean up your wires so that they can fit back in this box. And we can go ahead and put the cover back on. You can either do that in this step or wait until you actually get it plugged in so you can test that you don't have any issues with any of your connections. I'm pretty confident in mine, um, but typically you could either wait until the testing part to actually put this cover back on it's just easier to do it from this angle so I'm gonna go ahead and get it popped back on and so electric is ready water supply is ready the feet have been prepared for adjustment the drain hose already pre-attached the final step in preparing the dishwasher is going to just be locating how you're going to be securing it and when you're ready to mount it. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to be securing ours to the bottom of our countertop. So I'm going to go ahead and locate the bag that included your mounting brackets. And this simply just goes, it's actually labeled right here on the frame. On each side, you got a spot for the bracket. And it simply goes just like this. You'll see, just goes right from, you're going to go this angle and it flips around Then once you get here, this little tab can just be bent in just like that and that'll hold it in place you're going to repeat the same thing on this side just go, so it goes this way, you just go simply go like this bend over there and just like that and now it's ready to go okay, before we start sliding this dishwasher in place what's important is to consider how you're going to be feeding the lines under your sink if your setup is like ours, where you have an angle, um, it's, you, you have some flexibility in whether or not the hole is drilled at the top or at the bottom because there's that empty space area that gives the lines room to maneuver. However, if your dishwasher is directly next to your sink and you, it's a, it's a, it's a tight, like, tight cabinet right there where it's a tight wall on both sides, then it's really important that you reference the template and the hole that you drill out is towards the bottom and, and, and feed all your lines through the bottom and then create a high-rise loop for the drain hose in order for your dish, the dishwasher to function properly. But in our situation, our setup here, I, have, I already have a couple holes drilled out and you'll see I'm going to be running my 
water supply line as well as my power cord through that bottom hole and then I have a hole up top where I'm gonna run my drain hose and being able to run it through the top allows me to not have to create that high loop, it's automatic because it's gonna be running from the top and then I'm able to go ahead and make my connection right into the drain.